Hello, hello, and welcome to episode seven of Could It Be Podcast. Uh, this is my first update post explant. So, at the time of recording this, it's exactly a week after I've had my explant surgery. I was going to attempt to record during the week last week, but I was just really enjoying it, relaxing and monitoring my progress. So I've kept some notes throughout the week so I could keep you updated day by day account of, of how I was feeling. And I'll also share just the whole process when I went into hospital and everything like that, just in case anyone who's listening is going into having explant surgery themselves and just so that they know what they may expect in hospital. I went in Monday last week, packed the day before. I've shared everything that I was going to pack in previous episodes of the podcast and also on the Could It Be podcast Instagram page. One of my big concerns was how oily my hair would get and not being able to shower and wash my own hair. So I showered as late as possible before leaving for hospital. I braided my hair and it was a 12 o'clock admission. So we got in a little early so that my partner could find a part and straight into the hospital. You go to the admin section, they get you to fill in all of your forms and wait for somebody to walk you up to your room. One of the admin ladies walked us up to my room so my partner could stay there while I was going in for surgery, which was really great. My first nurse came in. Every single nursing staff member that I had in this hospital was amazing. They were non-judgmental, they were friendly, they were professional and really great communicators. So explained to me why things were happening, what time they would happen, they'd keep me updated. So I was very thankful for that because I was very nervous on the day. So what they did, uh, once they got around to me, they did my OBS, so checked my blood pressure, oxygen, saturation, heart rate. <laughs> they were a little high because of being nervous. My partner was really brilliant with knowing exactly what to say and you know when to make me laugh, when to help me stay calm. So I, that did tend to settle down closer to the surgery. I had to complete a rat test just to make sure that I didn't have COVID and that came back negative. So once all of that came back okay, I changed into my gown and the nurse helped with putting on the TED compression stockings. My surgeon also came in for a quick visit just to check on how I was feeling. She took some before photos and she also just talked me through what she'd be doing. So she'd be taking out the implant and the capsules and gave me a bit of an estimate as to when I would be going in for surgery. I went in for the surgery around 4 p.m. So it was a little later than they were first expecting, but obviously that just depends on any previous operations that my specialist was doing. And I remember waking up in the recovery room about 6.30 p.m., so the surgery went for just over two hours. I wasn't very groggy coming out of this anaesthetic. The nurses gave me some painkillers that I took a drink with and swallowed the tablets, um, so nothing really heavy in the way of painkillers, and I went back to my room not long after. When I got back to my room, my partner updated my family and friends. I hadn't let everybody know about this surgery. Not everybody knew that I had breast implants, so it wasn't something that I was posting about on social media. We sort of let anyone that knew know how I was feeling after coming back from recovery. There wasn't much pain really, but I did keep on top of my painkillers. It was more of a restriction feeling from the bandage, so it was like a sticky foam bandage with some gauze on the inside. I remember needing to go to the bathroom about 1.30 in the morning. The nurse helped me. She had to unclip my drip and she had to take the drains off. They were attached to the side of the bed so I could carry them around with me. I felt mostly okay walking around. My legs felt a bit funny as in I wasn't sure of my bearings, but it was only a short walk to the bathroom. Once I sort of got back up to walk back to my bed, I was feeling okay. So it wasn't dizziness or anything. It was just, yeah, my legs weren't sure where they were going. I looked in the mirror when I was washing my hands after um, going to the toilet and my eyes already looked a lot brighter at that point and I hadn't had much in the way of sleep. It was really hard to sleep that first night in the hospital because I was getting used to all of the hospital noises. The nurses were coming in every hour to do my OBS and also I had one of those leg compression machines so it was like inflating and deflating these things that were wrapped around my calves and any time it deflated it woke me up. So even with a lack of sleep my eyes looked really bright which was just crazy to me for it to be happening that quickly. A few things that I didn't really think were related to my uh, breast implant illness but seemed to disappear straight away. I had quite dry eyes in the time leading up to the operation and it also get congested through my sinuses like I had hay fever but it was all year around it would only happen at night and I noticed that these stopped on the first night as well. 
The bed had to be elevated so that the top half of the bed was at least 30 degrees so that my, my upper body was upright. And I woke up on, on the next morning, on Tuesday morning, feeling really good. Throughout the night, the nurses did get a little bit worried about my heart rate because it was in the high 50s. But my blood pressure and oxygen saturation were perfect. And I just let them know, look, my fitness watch measures my resting heart rate and that can sit in the high 50s when I'm really relaxed. So they were, they were okay with that once I mentioned that to them. One of the nursing staff members gave me a bed bath on the Tuesday as we were still waiting to see my specialist just to get the go ahead as to whether I could have a shower or not. So we thought in the meantime, I'd have a bed bath. And one thing I was a little bit self-conscious about, I think I've mentioned in previous episodes, I had really bad body odor, like a weird body odor in the last, I think it was actually around 12 months or so. And I checked before the nurse came in and that was gone. Like I was a sweaty mess because I was so nervous on Monday and then wearing the heavy gowns, they put the heated blankets over you. So I thought that I would stink <laughs> and I didn't at all. So that has stopped. That has not come back at all. And I have been using a, a Moogoo brand aluminium free natural roll on deodorant, which normally wouldn't work that well for me because of the smell that I would create, that my body would create. And I have not had that weird body odor. So that stopped straight away. And it wasn't there for that poor nurse <laughs> when she did the bed bath. I changed into my pajamas as soon as I'd had that bed bath and just felt a lot more human. And I could kind of see a slight difference in my shape, but obviously it was hard to really tell the final impact of the surgery because I had all of the bandages and stuff. So I wasn't, wasn't sure what to expect at this stage. Once the nurses knew that I could get up and wander around myself, the leg compression machine came off and I was still wearing the TED compression stockings. I also noticed a bit later on that day that that real sunken in look under my eyes had improved slightly. So my specialist, she's a very busy lady and she was only able to come and see me around 6 p.m. on the Tuesday night. She let me know that my implants were completely intact. She had removed those and the capsules and the capsules had a lot of calcification through them. She did let me know that I had some nice breast tissue still there, which will eventually fluff up. And she did prepare me for the fact that for a little while, my boobs will look scary was her wording but I had done some research and read about other people's stories in the lead up to this so I kind of prepared myself for the worst so I was really happy that she was communicating that as well whenever I have surgery the main thing that I hate about it is those I think they're called a gel co where the actual anesthetic is put in your arm and where the drip comes in I hadn't had my drip put back on after the first morning because they were only giving me electrolytes so the doctor said that that could be taken out um, once a nurse was available. So I was really relieved for that. The second night I slept five hours straight. So my obs were coming back really good. So the nurses uh, left me to sleep. And after I woke up, it was about 5.30 in the morning. A nurse came in to do some obs. I fell back asleep until breakfast came around. So I spent the Wednesday morning sitting up in my chair. My back can get a bit tired. I can't sleep for longer than eight hours because my body just tells me like, no, it's time to get up, time to move. So sat up in the chair, watched TV. I tried reading my book, but my eyes would get really sleepy. But yeah, I felt really good sitting up in the chair and I had my U-shaped pillow that I'd purchased just before the surgery, just sitting under my chest. And that, that gave me a little bit of relief and um, it was quite comfortable. On the Wednesday, my specialist came in around 11 a.m. She took my dressings off and I was so surprised at what I looked like without those dressings. I have more tissue there than I was expecting. So as I mentioned in episode one, I had tuberous breasts. They did not look like boobs. I had the tissue expanders and then the implants put in and I knew that I had quite big implants. And when I did see my specialist before this surgery, she did warn me that I'd have quite small boobs after this, but... I don't really notice much of a difference once I'm wearing my post-surgery bra and clothes. They are a different shape to each other. So before any of this surgery, my left boob was slightly bigger than my right. So my right has had a bigger implant in there. And so that boob's a little, probably got a bit more healing to do than the left-hand side. So they are slightly different to each other, but I'd prefer to have that than the symptoms that I've been living with for so long. I'm interested to see how they look once they start healing and fluffing up. And then, yeah, once the doctor had taken off the bandages, she gave me the okay to go home that day. 
Not long after this, the nurse came in to remove my drains. And I actually made myself really nervous for this because I remember it being quite unpleasant when I had the implants put in, like having the drains taken out. So I got really worked up and the nurse was great with talking me through it. We, she started chatting about dogs with me, which I can talk about forever. And that helped keep my mind off of what was happening. But yeah, like I, I just got myself so worked up. It wasn't that bad. It was like a little stingy maybe as it was moving out um, from the wound and she covered up the wounds and once it was done the pain was gone but I actually became quite shaky afterwards and I let her know I'm like look I feel a little bit shaky she's like right I'm going to go and get the heart rate monitor um, and do your blood pressure just check out if, if everything's looking okay there it's possibly just some adrenaline because you have been so nervous about this my um, blood pressure was a little bit high and she just said take 10 15 minutes before you get up and move around be kind to yourself um, and yeah give yourself some time before you do go and have a shower so I, I did exactly that I laid down I'd waited until that shaky feeling stopped and then yeah once I once that was gone I had a shower so I showered on my own I was able to reach up and wash my hair and I had no issues no pain just maybe a little pulling on the bandages but nothing that I thought was risky like with opening up the the wounds in my one of my previous episodes I talked about purchasing some post-surgery bras from Target but in some of the Facebook breast implant illness groups I'm part of some women suggested the Kmart ones so on the Sunday right before my surgery I jumped into a Kmart store grabbed one set so it was like a two pack of post-surgery bras and I actually found them to be better than the Target ones. They are a zip front and they have a little fabric flap over the bottom of the zip that stops it from digging in. The Target ones don't have that. They're, they're still fine to wear, but uh, what I did for the Kmart ones, I'm normally about a size 16 in tops and I bought the 14 to 16 and it's a really nice level of support without pushing on my chest so I would recommend those if you don't need a specialist compression bra if you're just having implants removed definitely yeah the Kmart ones are a better price um, and they are actually really made quite well so yeah first outfit that I wore that wasn't pajamas was a uh, zip up hoodie trackies um, just comfortable stuff and the nurses let me know that I'd need to wear the compression stockings for a few hours each day um, if I wasn't really moving around much straight after he finished work my partner came to pick me up um, what I'd recommend for any trip home after surgery is have a pillow or in my case I had a u-shaped pillow for under your chest just to support you and just remind your driver to go slow over any bumps slow around any corners because you do feel everything that little bit more so he was very careful I found that pillow was very comforting um, in that drive home I went to bed fairly early that first night. I was very tired. It had been a big day, you know, showering, having drains taken out, the journey home. I did double check with the nursing staff about what angle I'd, I'd need to sleep on after hearing that in hospital I needed to be at that 30 degrees. And she basically said anything that is comfortable for me. So um, I've been sleeping with the two wedge pillows that I've mentioned in a previous episode. So they're memory foam ones and I've actually got used to them and they're so comfortable. My, I feel really good using them. So my first night, I think I went to bed nine o'clock-ish. I woke up at 1.30 in the morning thinking, oh no, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get back to sleep. I got back to sleep within half an hour and slept through until the morning. So on my first day back at home, so waking up on Thursday morning, I stayed in bed all day binge watching Bridgerton. <laughs> and I finished it all in a day. I don't know whether that is a good or a lazy thing, but I'm pretty proud of that. I showered and I was able to dry my own hair with my mermaid blow dry brush. Um, and I was able to prepare my own basic meals at home as well. So I was really independent. My partner had a really long day at work because he had some activities he had to do after work on the Thursday. So I was at home for uh, 12 hours by myself, but I managed it all okay. On the Friday, I decided to attempt a 10 minute walk around the block. So my surgeon had let me know that I can start walking, but no other exercise for a while, no running, no weightlifting, no pushing anything overhead. So just starting with some walks, I just gave a 10 minute walk around the block a go and I felt fine. 
a bit later on in the day, I had some visitors and they were around for a few hours. So once they left, I did feel quite sore uh, and I was tired. So I napped for two hours on Friday afternoon and felt a lot better after that nap. On Saturday, I did a 25 minute walk with my partner. So I knew because I had him with me, uh, I felt a bit safer going for a bit longer. And I only tried to walk around the block that I live on, just so that if at any point it got too much, I could easily just come home. After the walk, I felt pretty good. I spent a lot of the day at home and then we did go to a sit down gig in the evening. And I made sure before I went that I did take some painkillers. It was a little bit uncomfortable when I was just kind of sitting in a booth, but I found that if I sat at a table and I wrapped my jacket up and sat it underneath my chest, I was quite comfortable. So I stayed for the whole gig. But on the Sunday, I attempted the same walk as I did on the Saturday and I did that five minutes quicker than I had done the day before. I wasn't pushing myself. I didn't feel unwell or sore or, or in any pain during that walk so I just kept going and, and yeah finished Saturday's walk in 20 minutes instead of instead of 25. We went out for a late lunch so it was about a 25 minute half an hour drive from home and I felt really comfortable the whole time we were out and lazed around once we got home on Sunday night and I had no painkillers during the day on Sunday. So today it's Monday. I stayed in bed until 8 a.m. My dogs woke me up at 6 a.m. I did a two kilometer walk this morning. So added an extra walk around the block than what I had been doing the two previous days. Did that in 27 minutes and I feel really good. There's no pain through my surgery sites. I don't feel weary. I feel great for being able to get outdoors and get moving. So I will attempt that again tomorrow. I haven't done anything specifically to try detoxing or anything like that. I'm just keeping up my water intake. I have a green tea each day, which I used to do that anyway. I have been eating a lot of chocolate. Um, my mum made me a snackle box, which had some cheese and chocolates in it. And my sister made me a chocolate bouquet. So I've been living on chocolate the last week, but there's a lot of that gone from the house now. So I am looking forward to eating a little bit healthier and and helping my body to detox on its own. I'm not going to do anything drastic yet. Or I probably won't. I'm not a big person that believes in juice detoxes or anything like that. So just letting my body do what it wants to do. I see my specialist tomorrow. So she'll take the dressings off that are covering the operation wounds at the moment. And I will return to work on Wednesday, which I'm feeling pretty good about. What I have noticed, especially from about Saturday onwards, I have a lot of energy brain wise. So I'm, I'm very awake once I wake up out of bed. I'm not groggy in the mornings like I have been before the surgery. And it's a little bit frustrating at the moment because I can't do a lot physically. So walking is it. Like I, I haven't been able to do much in the way of housework apart from washing dishes and putting laundry into the washing machine. But my partner's helped me with hanging it up. So it's, it's really hard at the moment for me because I am, yeah, I have a lot of energy, but I can't use it yet, but I will listen to my body. I'll go slow. And then once I'm able to do more, I will. It's almost like the brain fog has reduced. As I mentioned, my eyes are a lot brighter. So the whites of my eyes are white again. And I feel like maybe I even have a bit more color in my eyes. The sunken look under my eyes is improving. I'm not congested overnight, I don't have dry eyes and the weird body odour has disappeared. I haven't checked when it comes to my IBS whether any of my trigger foods still impact me. I feel like when it comes to gut health that kind of thing may take a little bit longer. Traditionally cauliflower and broccoli are the type of foods to set me off and they did serve a lot of that in hospital but I just avoided eating those just because I didn't want to get sick and react badly to foods while I was in hospital. I just ate what I knew I was able to. Part of the reason why I've recorded the episode today rather than last week was just because I wanted to be sure that the symptoms that have reduced or disappeared actually had stayed away. So I did wake up the first night when I went to walk to the bathroom. I had no pain in my feet and they had been quite a problem for a while and my left heel specifically was quite painful after walking and I hadn't experienced that at all the entire time that I was in hospital and 
I did wonder, look, I'm resting a lot, my feet are elevated, I'm on painkillers. Could this be the reason why I'm not experiencing that? But I can honestly say I haven't had that pain come back. The last two days during the day, I haven't taken any painkillers. And yeah, my feet aren't sore anymore. My right hip was having some issues. It was almost like a tendonitis pain had come back, but that's barely there anymore. And my lower back is feeling really good. So, so far, the joint aches seem to have reduced quite a bit. So far, week one, I'm feeling really good. The recovery from the surgery has been great. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next few months hold for me. When I'm walking, I used to get some aches in my calves and I'm not getting that on my short walks at the moment. So that's a promising sign for me too. So thank you for listening to my week one update. I'm looking forward to letting you know how everything goes uh, in the next few months. And I, I also want to say thank you to the people who have reached out to me on the Instagram. I had a few people who have been listening to the podcast. Wish me luck. Let me know. Hey, I've been listening. It's nice to put a face to the, the voice. Um, so thank you everyone for reaching out to me um, and for everyone over the world for listening to this podcast. So thank you very much. Uh, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care. This podcast shares my own experience and research. I'm not a medical or health professional. You can find me on Instagram at Could It Be I I Podcast. Thank you to my incredibly talented partner, Jacob Tengdal, for the intro and outro music. All recording, editing, and artwork is done by me. Thank you for listening.